हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स एंड दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर 16 काइनेमेटिक्स ऑफ वन डायमेंशनल ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द एंटायर स्टैटिक्स पार्ट एंड नाउ वी आर मूविंग ऑन टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स व्हिच इज काइनेमेटिक्स एंड इन दैट वी विल स्टार्ट विद वन डायमेंशनल ट्रांसलेशनल मोशन सो इन टुडेस लेक्चर First, we are going to understand what are the different types of planar motion. Planar motion means motion in a plane. So, we are not considering three-dimensional motion here. Here, we will assume that the body is under the motion in a single plane. Means, we are considering two-dimensional motion. And there are different types of two-dimensional motions. So, we will first understand what are those different types. And then, we will move on to one-dimensional translational motion. So, in this lecture, we are going to understand all the concepts related to one-dimensional translational motion, okay? Now, first of all, engineering mechanics is divided into statics and dynamics. Statics is the study of bodies which are at rest, okay? And dynamics is the study of bodies that are in motion. So, we have completed the statics part of engineering mechanics now we are moving to the dynamics part but dynamics is further divided into kinematics and kinetics kinematics is the study of motion of the body without considering the cause of motion for example if i kick a football at a 40 degree angle how high the football is going to move? Let's say this is a question. So, you are calculating the maximum height travelled by the football when it is hit at a 40 degree angle. In this analysis, you don't need the force acting, you don't need to consider the force acting on the football. You will see in the lecture how without considering the force, you can find this maximum height. So, if you are not considering the force acting on the body which is causing the motion, then the analysis will be known as kinematics. So, in kinematics, we will study about different parameters related to motion, but here we are not going to consider the forces associated with that motion. But in kinetics, we will deal with questions where you need to consider the force acting on the body. Maybe your objective is to find that force or maybe your objective is to find some other parameter but without considering force, you can't calculate that parameter. Here, you don't need to consider the force but here without considering the force, you cannot solve the problem, okay? So, beta, dynamics is divided into kinematics and kinetics. First, we will cover the entire kinematics part and then we will move on to the kinetics part, okay? So, kinematics, in kinematics, we will study different parameters related to the motion. But there are different types of motion. So, in kinematics, how we have divided the chapters? The chapters are divided based on the type of motion. Whether you are studying this type of motion or that type of motion or that type of motion, okay? For different motions, we have different formulae, different methods to analyze. So, let's first understand what are different types of motion, okay? But here, keep this thing in mind, we are only considering motion in a plane. We are only considering planar motion, two-dimensional motion, okay? Now, when we talk about two-dimensional motion, the motion can be divided into three categories. It can be a pure translational motion, it can be a pure rotational motion or it can be combination of translation and rotational motion. Okay, if it is not pure translation or pure rotation, then we call it general motion, which is combination of translation and rotation. Every general motion, if it is not pure translation or pure rotation, then it is combination of translation and rotation. Okay, now what is the difference between translation and rotation? 
in case of translation motion the particles move along identical parallel path identical parallel path means see this is a pen if i move this pen like this then you can see that different particles of this pen are moving along identical and parallel paths the paths of all these particles are parallel to each other and they are identical means if the top of this pen is moving by 10 centimeter the bottom is also moving by 10 centimeter the center is also moving by 10 centimeter but if i start moving this pen like this then the particles are not having identical paths now the top is moving along this path the center is moving along this path so they are moving along concentric circles their paths are concentric circles so that is the difference between translation and rotation in rotation the path of different particles are concentric circles okay they have different radius but the paths will all be concentric circles okay so that is translation and rotation now general notion means it is neither this nor this so it comes into this category okay so in this particular chapter we are going to talk about translation motion then we will move on to rotation motion then we will move on to general motion okay but translation motion are also of two types rectilinear and curvilinear okay so we are going to talk about translation motion in detail but before that let me tell you another very important concept when we talk about different types of motion then the body that we are analyzing which is in motion it can be considered as a particle or it can be considered as an entire body what do we mean by particle particle means it has some mass but the size is negligible we don't consider the size we assume that it is just like a particle it's a point okay now in some cases we assume the body to be a particle we don't consider the shape and size of the body why do we do that because the shape and size of the body has nothing to do with the motion means means for example let's say a car is moving on a flat road okay the car is moving for let's say one kilometer it starts with some velocity okay i am asking you how much time it will take to move one kilometer on this flat road when you solve this question you will not need the shape and size of the car maybe in some cases you might need the mass of the car but you will not need the shape and size of the car so in this case i am assuming the car to be a particle when i will solve the question i will treat the car as a particle which is having some mass let's say the mass of car is 1000 kg so this particle has a mass of 1000 kg okay the entire mass is concentrated at a single point and this point is moving like this so here i am not considering the shape or size of the car I am assuming the car to be a particle so in some cases we do this what are these cases if there is no rotation involved in the motion then you can consider this then you can assume the body to be a particle okay it means in rotation and general motion we can't consider the body to be a particle but in translation motion we can consider the body to be a particle now the question is can in can we consider the body to be a particle in all the translation cases no there are some cases of translation where you will have to consider 
the shape and size of the body the entire body okay but it will not come in kinematics okay in kinetics see in kinematics also we will divide the chapters into three translation rotation general motion and in kinetics also we will divide the chapters into three translation rotation and general motion okay so when we will study the kinematics of translation then we will not have to worry about the shape and size of the body in translation motion but in kinetics in some problems we have to consider the shape and size in translation motion okay in rotation and general motion in all problems we have to consider the entire body we cannot treat it as a particle but in translation in kinematics in all problems we will treat it as a particle in kinetics in some problems we will treat it as a particle i hope it is understood i hope it is clear okay what will be the advantage of doing so see there is no advantage as such we are just saving our time okay we don't need to consider that the height of the body is this much the width of the body is this much because it has nothing to do with our formula in our formula na, there will be no dimensions involved of the body so why do we have to consider the body right we will just assume that it is a small particle okay Chalo. Now, let's start with translation motion. Okay. Translation motion, I already told you, is a motion where the particles have identical parallel path. Okay. All particles have identical parallel path. Okay. Now, if all the particles have identical parallel path, their displacement will be same. Displacement means in simple terms, the distance traveled. Although displacement and distance are different. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Some people will get triggered after hearing this. Displacement and dis uh, distance are different. Why are you saying same? See, in simple words, I told you in simple words, they are same but technically they are different okay so right now for this definition let's assume displacement and distance are same so all particles are covering the same distance in translational motion i told you this example now if the pen is moving all like this all particles of the pen are moved by the same distance okay but translational motion are of two types rectilinear translation and curvilinear translation both are translation motion so what is the difference understand this rectilinear translational motion means the particles will have straight path path of the particles na they will be straight for example if a pen is moving like this or let's say a car is moving on a flat road flat surface the road is flat so this motion of the car is the example of rectilinear translation but if that same car is moving on a hill look at this look at this this is a car let's say this is our straight path okay this is our car which is moving on a flat road so here if you trace the path of the particles na, all particles will have a straight path okay but in case of curvilinear translation, the path will be like this. You can consider the example of a car moving on a hill. Okay. So, what happens is in this case, if you trace the path of the car, <clears throat> then you will get 
अ कर्व्ड पाथ ओके ना व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस इन बोथ केसेस ओके हियर द पाथ इज स्ट्रेट हियर द पाथ इज कर्व्ड सो व्हाट व्हाट विल बी द डिफरेंस अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस इज इन दिस केस इफ आई कैलकुलेट लेट्स से वेलोसिटी ओके लेट्स से आई एम कैलकुलेटिंग वेलोसिटी then there will be only one component of velocity it will be either in x or in y okay rectilinear means straight path so straight path can be x also or y also okay for example if i am holding a ball and let's say i release that ball so that ball will move in y direction vertical that is also rectilinear translation it is rectilinear translation in y so rectilinear translation can be in x it can also be in y it cannot be like this don't say that this is also rectilinear translation because here also i am having straight path no we will not consider this to be rectilinear okay rectilinear means either x or y okay so beta here if i calculate the velocity of any particle it will only have one component x in the example of the ball the velocity will be in y so here the velocity has only one component either x component or y component but here if i consider any particle its velocity will have x component as well as y component it will have x component as well as y component both components okay so in simple language you can say that it is one dimensional translational motion and it is two dimensional translational motion here there will be only one component of every motion variable whether you are calculating the displacement or velocity or acceleration it will have only one component and here they will all have two components one is x one is y okay so first we will deal with one dimensional translational motion then we will deal with two dimensional translational motion okay if you are getting confused let me repeat it first we are dealing with translational motion okay then in translation motion also we are first dealing with one dimensional translation motion then we will deal with two dimensional mo translation motion once we complete this then we will move on to rotation and then we will move on to general motion okay let's start with one dimensional rectilinear translational motion so all the particles of the body move along straight lines okay so let me draw a very good example for you of translational motion so i will explain this concept using the example of a car Hmm. So sorry. What is this? <clears throat> okay so let's say this is a car which is moving on a flat road okay and i am considering two positions of the car
ओके आई एम कंसिडरिंग टू पोजिशन ऑफ द कार नाउ लेट्स कंसिडर एनी टू पार्टिकल्स लेट्स से दिस इज पार्टिकल ए ऑन टॉप एंड दिस इज पार्टिकल बी एट बॉटम ओके If I trace the path of this particle, this is the path of particle A. Now look at this. This is the path of particle B, and you can see that both these paths. Let's say this is x A and this is x B. So x A and x B <coughs> both are equal. and they both are parallel hai na both are identical and both are parallel okay so this is a one dimensional translational motion okay chalo now let's move on to <coughs> what is this i don't understand let's move on to motion variables now what do we mean by motion variables how do i remove this ओके, सो व्हाट आर मोशन वेरिएबल्स मोशन वेरिएबल्स आर दोज वेरिएबल्स दैट रेप्रेजेंट द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन मीन्स व्हाट अंडरस्टैंड वेन एवर अ बॉडी इज इन मोशन दैट मोशन कैन बी रेप्रेजेंटेड बाय सम मैथमेटिकल इक्वेशन फॉर एग्जांपल, लेट्स से द मोशन इज टेकिंग प्लेस अलॉन्ग अ पैराबोलिक पाथ ओके सो द equation of motion will be parabolic which will represent that okay this mathematical equation is governing the motion okay motion variables means what that equation that mathematical equation will be in terms of these variables for example let's say i write this equation y equal to 3x square so this is a mathematical equation and this x and y are what variables if this equation is representing the motion then these variables are motion variables okay now what are these motion variables so motion variables are time position displacement velocity and acceleration you already know about the time i don't need to define time right you know what is time let's define position displacement velocity and acceleration now what do we mean by position position means let's say the body is moving along x direction okay let's say the body is moving along x direction now <laughs> let's say this is your origin O is what origin okay and let's say right now the particle is here
okay with respect to this origin what is the position of this particle so you will say that okay this is the position of the particle let's say this sp so this sp will be known as the position of the particle right now i am considering the motion in x if the motion is in y direction then this position will be along y direction in two dimensional motion the position will have two components x component and y component right now it has only one component either x component or y component okay now the second thing is displacement what do we mean by displacement displacement means change in position So let's say this was the origin. Initially, the particle was here, and then the particle moved to here. Okay. So initially, the position was this, and then the position is this. initially let's say it was s1 and then let's say it was s2 so displacement will be s2 minus s1 okay now understand this displacement is usually calculated like this usually what happens is if we are considering initial and final position initial position itself is considered as the origin so if initial position itself is the origin then you don't have to consider s2 minus s1 just calculate the distance between these two okay now some of you might be wondering that we have studied the definition of displacement as the least distance between initial and final position so sir here why are you not considering that understand beta here we are talking about rectilinear translational motion one dimensional translational motion the body is moving either in x or in y so here we don't have to bother about the least distance or something like that because here the distance is only having one component So what will be the least distance if the body is having curvy linear motion na from here to here if the body is moving then you can say that this is the total distance and this is the least distance so here displacement and distance are different but here the body is moving only either in x or y so here we don't need that concept okay now displacement is a vector quantity distance is a scalar quantity distance will be only positive it will not be positive or negative distance will always be positive but displacement can be positive or it can be negative for example if you are moving on the right side as well as on the left side then in one case i will consider the displacement to be positive and in second case i will consider the distance to be negative it will depend upon your sign convention it will also depend upon your origin okay so displacement can be positive as well as negative so it is a vector quantity okay now next motion variable is the velocity velocity of a particle is defined as the rate of change in its position for example let's say a body is moving in x direction okay so 
so initially the particle was here then it moved to here okay now in simple language we say that velocity is distance divided by time so let's say from here to here total distance is s and total time is t so if i calculate the velocity as s by t it will be average velocity okay average velocity is the total distance divided by total time but understand this from p to p dash the velocity of the particle was not same this entire distance was not traveled with same velocity and if it is not traveled with same velocity we can't calculate velocity as distance divided by time so how are we going to calculate the velocity understand in this case at every point the velocity will be different from p to p dash let's say this distance is 1 kilometer so in this entire 1 kilometer the velocity was not same at every instant instant means let's say every second at every second the velocity was different so what we are going to do let's say we want to calculate the velocity here so what we are going to do is we will consider a very small distance just before this let's say this distance is ds and in order to travel this distance the time was dt so from here we will get instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity means instantaneous velocity means the velocity at this particular instant it will be ds divided by dt okay where ds is a very small distance dt is a very small time so this is instantaneous velocity similarly acceleration what is acceleration acceleration is the rate of change of velocity the velocity is not constant it is always changing okay from 10 meter per second to 20 20 meter per second to 30 30 meter per second to 40 meter per second what is the rate of change how quickly the velocity is changing or how slowly the velocity is changing if the acceleration is large the velocity is changing quickly if the acceleration is small the velocity is changing slowly okay now acceleration will also not be constant in the entire motion so in this case also we calculate instantaneous acceleration instantaneous acceleration a is dv by dt where dv is a very small change in velocity and dt is the time now understand this equation can also be written like this a equals to dv by dt na? we can write it like this dv by ds into ds by dt now what is ds by dt ds by dt is v so a will become v dv by ds this is another relation so understand we have three relations between s v and a v equal to ds by dt a equals to dv by dt a equals to v dv by ds how we are going to use these equations that i will tell you later okay now velocity and acceleration are also vector quantities okay velocity will also be positive or negative if the body is moving let's say towards right and then towards left so one will be in one case velocity can be considered positive in other case velocity is considered negative let's say you're dropping a ball initially the ball is moving downward and then after it hits the surface it moves upward so you can consider downward velocity to be negative 
upward velocity to be positive okay so it has direction so that's why it is vector acceleration is also same acceleration if positive means velocity is increasing and negative acceleration means velocity is decreasing okay chalo now you will come across two types of problems when it comes to one dimensional translational motion in one case you will have uniform acceleration constant acceleration constant acceleration means acceleration is constant in the entire motion so these are one category of problems and second category of problems are non uniform motion where it is not necessary that acceleration is constant okay we will solve both types of problems okay if the acceleration is constant then understand what happens let's say a body is moving in x direction okay from here to here okay let's say initially the time was zero and here the time was t seconds initially the displacement was zero and here the displacement was s meters initially the velocity was u meter per second and finally the velocity is v meter per second but the acceleration during the entire motion was constant okay now here after solving these equations v equals to ds by dt a equals to dv by dt v a equals to v dv by ds we will get three more equations okay first we will solve this equation a equal to dv by dt so i will use this dv equal to a dt okay now understand I was trying to remove this bubble but I am not able to do it. Okay, forget it. dv equals to adt. Now understand, if I integrate this equation over the entire path, let's say from this to this, I am integrating this equation. Okay. What is the limit of velocity? u to v. What is the limit of time? 0 to t. If I all this i will get v minus u now here acceleration is constant so it will not be integrated so if i integrate this i will get at so v equals to u plus at this is our first equation okay next we will solve this equation a equals to v equals to ds by dt so i can write it v dt sorry ds equal to v dt i can integrate it again 
what is the limit of displacement 0 to s what is the limit of time 0 to t if i integrate this i will get s but here it cannot be integrated directly because velocity is not constant it is dependent on time how the velocity is dependent on time like this u plus at so i will put v equal to u plus at and then i will integrate it from 0 to t so here you will get ut plus half at square so this is another equation s equal to ut plus half at square and the third relation a equal to v dv by ds so i can write it v dv equal to a ds again integrate it limit will be here u to v here 0 to s if i integrate this i will get v square by 2 minus u square by 2 a is constant so i will get a s so this will become v square minus u square equals to 2 a s so this is the third equation so we have these three equations of motions but they are only valid when the acceleration is constant uniform otherwise how you will solve the problem otherwise you will solve the problem using these equations v equals to ds by dt a equals to dv by dt a equals to v dv by ds what type of problems you can expect let's solve those problems okay so first we will solve problems based on uniform acceleration motion this is the first problem in front of you a train starts from rest at a station and travels with constant acceleration of 12 meter per second square distance traveled by the train after 5 seconds is understand this is a question of constant acceleration okay now in this question what are the given values what is given to you a train starts from rest it is starting from rest means u is zero and it travels with constant acceleration means a is 12 meter per second square time is 5 seconds and they are asking you to calculate the distance means s so here which equation you can use you have u a and t you need to find s obviously we will use this equation right s equals to u t plus half a t square now u is 0 a is 12 and t is 5 so s will be equal to 6 into 25 150 meters now don't say that they are asking distance you have calculated displacement beta this is rectilinear translation and that too it is taking place in a single direction it, the body is not moving back na? so the distance and displacement will be same if the motion is happening like this the body first moved, moved towards right and then it moved towards left in that case distance and displacement will be different but here it will be same okay i am saying that if the body is moving like this let's say this is the origin okay the body first moved to here and then it moved back and then it moved to here okay let's say this is 5 meter and this is 3 meter so it first moved to o to p then it moved back to o and then it moved to p dash so from o to p dash from o to p dash if i calculate the distance how much will it be if i calculate the distance it will be 5 meter 
फ्रॉम ओ टू पी देन फ्रॉम पी टू ओ अगेन फाइव मीटर एंड देन ओ टू पी डैश थ्री मीटर सो थर्टीन मीटर बट डिस्प्लेसमेंट वट विल बी डिस्प्लेसमेंट फ्रॉम ओ टू पी इट विल बी फाइव मीटर फ्रॉम पी टू ओ इट विल बी माइनस फाइव मीटर बिकॉज डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज पॉजिटिव एज वेल एज नेगेटिव सो राइट साइड पॉजिटिव लेफ्ट साइड नेगेटिव एंड देन फ्रॉम ओ टू पी डैश इट इज माइनस थ्री मीटर सो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज माइनस थ्री मीटर ना यू कैन सी दैट इन केस ऑफ डिस्प्लेसमेंट यू डोंट नीड टू कंसिडर द एंटायर पाथ you just look at the initial and the final position this is the initial position and this is the final position right so just look at the initial and final you don't have to consider this you just have to consider initial to final so minus 3 meter okay chalo a car starts from rest and moves with constant acceleration of 5 meter per second square Velocity of the car after traveling a distance of hundred meters is so here again the initial velocity is zero acceleration is five meter per second square distance is given hundred meter and you need to calculate the velocity now looking at these things. Which relation comes in mind? V square minus U square is equal to two as, right? So here we need to find V. U is zero. Acceleration is five, and displacement is hundred. So what will be V? I am getting thirty one point six two meter per second. Yes. Let's solve the next question. A car starts from rest and with constant acceleration achieves a velocity of twenty meter per second when it travels a distance of three hundred meter. Acceleration of the car is. Again, the car is starting from rest, so initial velocity is zero. It is moving with constant acceleration. Velocity, final velocity is twenty meter per second. Distance is three hundred meter, and they are asking you to calculate the acceleration. Looking at these things again, this equation comes to mind. V square minus U square equals to two as final velocity is twenty, initial velocity is zero, acceleration is unknown, and displacement is three hundred meter. So you will get acceleration from here. I am getting point six six meter per second square. a particle moves along a straight line it starts from rest with a constant acceleration of 10 meter per second square determine the distance traveled by the particle in the 6th second of its motion so they are asking you to find the displacement in the 6th second what do we mean by 6th second understand let's say the body is moving the particle is moving along this straight line it started from zero it started from zero this is 1 second 2 second 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's say 8 So this is t equal to zero. This is t equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now they are saying find the 
distance traveled by the particle in sixth second what is sixth second look at this this is the first second hai na 0 to 1 this is the first second this is the second second this is the third second this is the fourth second this is the fifth second and this is the sixth second so they are asking you to find this okay let me call this x how do you calculate this x directly s equals to ut plus half at square but the problem is if i apply that equation from here to here i need to know the initial velocity means the velocity here do i know the velocity here no i don't know the velocity here if I apply s equals to ut plus half at square, na, I need to know the u means the velocity here. So I cannot calculate, I cannot apply s equals to ut plus half at square directly between these two points. I know the initial velocity here only. Hai na? I know the initial velocity here. u will be 0 here. So what I will do is, I will apply the s equals to ut plus half at square from here to here. And then I will apply s equals to ut plus half at square from here to here. Let's say this is s5 and let's say this is s6. From 0 to 5 displacement, from 0 to 6 displacement. So, I can say that x equals to s6 minus s5. So, I can write it this ut plus half at square for t equals to 6 minus ut plus half at square for t equal to 5. And I will get the value of x. So ut plus half at square u is 0. Right? Acceleration is 10 meter per second. So and t equals to 6 minus again 0 and t equals to 5. So from here you will get the value of x. So it will be 5 into 6 square minus 5 into 5 square. So 55 meter. There is a direct formula for this also. But I don't want you to remember that direct formula. You can do it like this easily. Okay. Chalo. So these are the problems where the body is moving in x direction. Let's have a problem where the body is moving in y direction. A body is dropped from the top of a tall building. Body is dropped. Okay. If it takes 5 seconds in falling on the ground, the height of the building is. Now understand. Whenever the body is under rectilinear translation in Y. Na, if the body is free falling. Free falling means what? Understand. Free fall means. It is not falling under the influence of any other force. It is just moving under the influence of its own weight. Okay. It is just moving under the influence of its own weight. Now the body can fall down or the body can move up. It can go like this or it can go like this. For example, let's say I am throwing a ball up. When the ball is in the air, is there any other force acting on the ball other than its own weight? No. There is only weight of the ball acting on the ball, right? No other force. And if the ball is coming down, if I let's say release the ball from some height, it is coming down. Then also when the ball is in the air, there is no other force other than the weight of the ball. So, this is known as free fall. 
ओके इन दीज केसेस एक्सेलरेशन इज इक्वल टू जी वेयर जी इज एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी इट्स वैल्यू इज यूजली 9.81 मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी बट इन सम केसेस इट इज कंसिडर्ड ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल टू 10 मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर यूजली इन क्वेश्चन दे से दैट अज्यूम ए जी इक्वल टू टेन सो दैट आर कैलकुलेशन बिकम्स इजी so when the body is not under the influence of any other force if the body is only under the influence of its own weight then the acceleration is equal to g okay in kinetics we will study the questions we will solve the questions where the body is moving in air but it is not only under the influence of its own weight it is also subjected to other forces in that case acceleration will not be equal to g i hope it is clear for example let's say there is a missile okay let's say there is a missile moving in the air for that missile a will not be equal to g why because the missile is under the influence of other forces also na see the fuel of the missile is burning so it is subjected to the thrust of that fuel of that burning of fuel so beta in that case the body is subjected to other forces also so acceleration will not be equal to g okay so i hope it is clear now read the question a body is dropped from the top of a tall building if it takes 5 seconds in falling on the ground height of the building is so look at this let's say this is our building let's say this is our building this is the body okay it is dropped what do we mean by it is dropped dropped means initial velocity must be zero right if it is dropped means we are just dropping it we are not throwing it throw means there must be some initial velocity drop means initial velocity zero okay it takes 5 seconds on falling the on the ground what is the height now what will be this height beta can i say that the height of this building will be equal to the displacement can i say that this height will be equal to the displacement yes so if i apply the displacement equation s equal to ut plus half at square i can easily solve the problem now understand people are usually very confused when to take acceleration positive and when to take acceleration negative some people assume that if the body is moving up acceleration is positive moving down acceleration is negative or moving up acceleration negative moving down acceleration positive it has nothing to do with moving up or down it has nothing to do with moving up or down moving up negative moving down positive now it doesn't work like that understand this it depends upon the direction of motion whether you are considering upward motion or downward motion okay understand let's say this is my initial position and this is my final position initial position and final position so from initial to final what is my direction of motion downward hai na my motion is downward so in this case i can have the sign convention like this 
whatever is downward i can consider it positive whatever is upward i can consider it negative my choice i can also consider upward to be positive downward to be negative i can consider downward to be positive upward to be negative now understand whenever you are writing the equation for motion in y direction na you can use these arrows what is the direction of displacement displacement is downward na from here to here displacement is downward initial velocity is zero what is the direction of acceleration acceleration is always downward okay acceleration is always downward whether the body is moving up or moving down acceleration is always downward see acceleration is due to weight and weight of the body is always downward so acceleration due to gravity is always downward okay acceleration due to gravity can never be upward it is always downward okay now understand this is downward this is downward so if i consider this positive this will also be positive if i consider this negative this will also be negative so using this method you can easily find out whether the acceleration will be positive or negative you just apply these arrows okay so i have to find the height of the body this is zero acceleration due to gravity is 10 and time is 5 so h will be 125 meter yes let's solve one more question a stone is dropped from the top of a building which is 100 meter high with what velocity will it hit the ground again same type of problem we are dropping the stone again we are dropping the stone okay means initial velocity is zero height of the building is given 100 meter this is 100 meter and they are asking with what velocity will it hit the ground so we have to find the final velocity we can use this equation v square minus u square equal to 2 a s now understand when it will hit the ground the final velocity will be downward only right initial velocity is zero acceleration due to gravity is always downward displacement is also downward so everything is downward let's assume downward to be positive so this will be v square minus 0 equal to 2 into acceleration due to gravity 10 displacement 100 so from here i will get the value of v i am getting 44.72 meter per second A ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 8 meter per second from top of a tower 50 meter high. This is an interesting question, okay. So let's say this is my tower. From the top of the tower, the ball is thrown upward. This time it is thrown. So it has some initial velocity and that too it is thrown upward okay so here the initial velocity is 8 meter per second upward now the tower has a height of 50 meter this is 50 meter find the total time taken by the stone to reach the foot of the tower understand 
while solving this problem i have seen many students do this first it will go from here to here and then its velocity will become zero then it will start coming down you don't have to do that you are calculating the time taken to move from here to here this is your initial position this is your final position in between where it went doesn't matter we will apply equation of motion between this point and this point only just like in this example also i told you na we have to apply the equation from here to here we don't need to consider this okay we will just apply the equation between this point and this point okay initial and final so this is our initial this is our final between these two points let's apply this equation s equal to ut plus half at square now understand the displacement from here to here is downward initial velocity is upward acceleration due to gravity is always downward now understand downward if you consider positive upward will become negative so this will be 50 equal to minus 8 t plus half into 10 into t square so it will become 5 t square minus 8t minus 50 equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation. If you solve this quadratic equation, you will get two roots of t. Do you know how to solve the quadratic equation? I hope you know. If you don't know, you can watch our lectures of a new YouTube series which we are starting, Foundation Batch. Foundation Batch is for all the students who have uh, who have forgot the basic concepts of mathematics and physics like solving quadratic equation, solving basic differential equation, basic differentiation, basic integration, basic concepts of vectors, basic concepts of limits, basic concepts of graphs, moment of inertia, center of gravity. These are all the concepts which you have already studied in your school 9, 10, 11, 12th. But you have you might have forgotten there are some students who are in diploma they have not studied these concepts in 11th and 12th so for all these students we are starting this new batch it will be completely free it will be on youtube okay so if you watch the lectures of this you will understand the concepts of basic integration basic uh, differentiation all this okay Chalo. now t is equal to if you solve this quadratic equation what you will get t equals to 4.06 minus 2.46 now this is not possible na time can never be negative okay so t will be 4.06 seconds only okay so in 4.06 seconds it will reach the foot of the tower Chalo. now comes a different category of questions Till now, we were solving problems of uniform acceleration, where the acceleration was constant. Now, we will solve problems of non-uniform acceleration or you can say problems where we will have to solve, uh, use the differentiation and integration. Here you have, let's solve this problem. Time variation of the position of a particle in rectilinear motion is given by s equals to 2t square minus 8t plus 6 displacement of the particle when velocity becomes 0 is so in this particular question they are asking what will be displacement when the velocity becomes 0 they have given you the equation of the position from here you need to find 
the displacement when velocity becomes zero. Now, how do we find the displacement when velocity becomes zero? First, you will have to find the equation of velocity. How we will find the equation of velocity? V equal to ds by dt. So, V will be equal to d by dt of 2t square minus 8t plus 6. So, equation of velocity will be 4t minus 8. Okay, this is the equation of velocity. Now, when the velocity becomes 0, t will be 2 seconds. Hey na? So, now I know the time when the velocity becomes 0. So, can I find the displacement when the velocity becomes 0? Of course, s equal to 2t square minus 8t plus 6 at t equal to 2 seconds. s will be equal to 2 into 2 square minus 8 into 2 plus 6. So, s will be equal to how much? Minus 2 meter. Now, understand. Some people might think that this is the answer. S equals to minus 2 meter. But this is not the answer, beta. Understand why? At t equals to 0, what is the position? At t equals to 0, the position is 6 meter and at t equals to 2, the position is minus 2 meter. So, here you have the equation of position, not the equation of displacement, okay. So, at t equals to 0, Let's say this is the origin at t equals to 0, at t equals to 0, the position is here, okay. And at t equals to 2 second, the position is here. This is minus 2 and this is plus 6. So, what is the distance travelled? They are asking you to find the distance travelled, na? Displacement of the particle when the velocity becomes 0. So, initially he was here and then he came to here. So, what will be the displacement? Eight meter. Na? Now, some people might be thinking, sir, why? Understand. Initially, he was not here. Initially, he, he was here and then he travelled to here. So, from here to here, displacement will be eight meter. Okay. Distance travelled will be also eight meter. One second. So initially he was here and now he was here. So displacement is 8 meter. Okay. The answer will be 8 meter. Next question, the velocity of particle in rectilinear motion is given by v equal to 4t minus 3t square. 
डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द पार्टिकल वेन टी इक्व टू फोर सेकेंड इज तो हियर वी हैव द इक्वेशन ऑफ द वेलॉसिटी वी नीड टू फाइंड द डिस्प्लेसमेंट वेन टी इज इक्वल टू फोर सेकेंड तो हाउ टू फाइंड द डिस्प्लेसमेंट फ्रॉम द इक्वेशन ऑफ वेलॉसिटी अंडरस्टैंड v इक्वल्स टू डी एस बाई डी टी ओके एंड इट इज इक्वल टू फोर टी माइनस थ्री टी स्क्वायर सो आई कैन राइट इट डी एस इक्वल्स टू फोर टी माइनस थ्री टी स्क्वायर डी टी इफ आई इंटीग्रेट दिस इक्वेशन देन आई विल गेट द डिस्प्लेसमेंट बट वेन आई इंटीग्रेट अंडरस्टैंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट एट टी इक्व टू जीरो वॉज जीरो एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट एट टी इक्व टू फोर इज अनोन सो दिस विल बी एस इक्व टू So how much are you getting? Minus thirty two meter. okay now this is another equa question the equation of motion of a particle moving along straight line is given by a equal to 3t square minus t plus 4 where a is the acceleration and t is the time in seconds velocity of the particle at t equals to 2 second is 25 meter per second velocity at t equals to 4 seconds is this is the assignment question for you i expect you to solve this problem on your own and in the next class we will see the solution of this question okay so thank you so much for attending this class i will see you tomorrow in the next lecture till then bye bye take care have a great day